everybody, welcome to Saving Vegas. Today I'm doing something a little different. These D9s have been sitting up there for quite some time. It's been a long time now where I've wanted to get those things down and, well, take some measurements of them, kind of go through them again. It's been a while. I did the rebuild on those crossovers and I did that before I had any of that measuring equipment. So I'm really curious on a few things about them and plus there's I want to kind of take them to the next level I didn't do like a full really really good quality uh recap on them and some of the parts I use in there could possibly be causing some issues and I'm not sure if it really matters all that much or not but I really want to find out uh problem is these are big heavy speakers so this one I've got a base on it and then this one over here, I did not put the base on it. I have it made, I have it ready for it, but uh, it just height is an issue. Uh, Cause I've got my compressor mounted up here. Uh, this is kind of a nice place to put it out of the way when I built the shop. So I can only go so high. But to get these things down, it requires a bit of work. And well, it requires my tractor actually. Uh, I've got some pallet forks for it and I'll be putting those on Maybe the buck, I don't know. And then probably get a pallet on it. And I'm gonna be putting something back up there. I haven't quite figured out what yet. Maybe possibly what's tucked back in there. I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to decide yet. But first things first, I gotta get these suckers down. So uh, let's get working on that. So I am actually on my day off. It's Monday, I got my my little guy, he's, you see him way out there, he's ripping around on his quad. <laughs> but here it is. I uh, get the old John Deere. Well, it's not old. Oh, Rusty. Hey, puppy. Hey, buddy. He's, uh, he's hiding from the sun underneath there. But yeah, I've got my pallet forks on this. This 3032E John Deere tractor. I'm going to use this. Uh, I'm going to have to go kind of to the back 40 here and see if I can find a decent pallet to use. And, uh, yeah, get those speakers down. Okay, so here we are, my D9s. Um, I've had these for several years now and I'm still not 100% sure uh, what year they were actually made. Uh, there's ways to find out by the crossover design how all that stuff is. I'm gonna be going through that, hopefully figuring that out. I never did do that before. Um, usually the woofers, most likely, they usually have a, a year stamped on them these did not, as far as I believe. I think uh, my other one's sitting down in the corner here. Um, that one did have a year stamped on the back, and I think it said 89, maybe 90. It was later on in the series. I do believe that that is a, uh, that was a replacement woofer that somebody put in after, so I don't think that's actually the year of the cabinets and, and, and everything else. Uh, they also did not come with the proper tweeters when I bought them. It came with... Uh, it was a, a set of, I don't even know what it was. It was Fosters, I believe. Um, the replacement tweeters, which actually don't measure too terribly. So they're not a bad replacement if need be. But I did find uh, some original uh, CS5s. And those are in here now. Yeah, before I get too far into this, I'm going to bring you guys in. We're going to take a look at this cabinet and... Just a couple things I wanted to go through. I've had a few questions about the veneer I put on here. 
and I didn't really give a specific, uh, like I got it on Amazon, but I didn't give a specific, like what, what, what the material was for you guys to use. And there's a reason for that. And I will show you that right now. Okay. So like I said, I did, uh, this, this veneer that I put on here did come from Amazon. That's where I ordered it. It's not bad. The look is still, it, it looks really, really nice if you don't touch them or move them around ever. Um, there were some flaws. It does look very nice. You can see it's really thin. Anything underneath that kind of got caught underneath there, you can see through. So that's my first issue with, with this veneer. Here, I did not leave it like that. So it's like that shrunk or, or whatever happened. It doesn't look as, it doesn't look good. I did not put the base on this one because this one was sitting um, up on my shelf up there. And it was really tight with the compressor on top. So with the base on, it wasn't going to fit on the shelf. <sighs> All I did really was, was getting them up there and then taking them down. And it just beat the crap out of the bottom of this, tore this right up. This stuff is really thin. It's not good. You see the corner peeled up. So I will be redoing the veneer. I don't know if I'm going to do that sooner than later here. It'd be nice to do it before I put them back up there, but... We'll see what happens. See if I can find a better material to use. The gray, however, I'm not too um, worried about. It still looks really good. So yeah, I'm going to start pulling some of these. Uh, I'm gonna start pulling all the drivers out and we're gonna take a look at the crossover and then we got lots of stuff to go through. I will be measuring them. I'm gonna be popping that one up on my stand and, and measuring. And uh, we'll also do that and look over the measurements for, for these things. Okay, I've got both woofers out here and just to compare the two because there's going to be two different versions and I've seen people ask questions about this before. Um, there is a style with a bumped back magnet and that's the one on the left here and then there's the one, these are the original ones that came with these D9s uh, and it's just a flat bottom. There is chances that you have one of each in your cabinets. It's happened before. Um, I think my D1s have that. It's Probably came from the factory that way. I wouldn't worry about it. It's not a big issue. So here's the one I pulled out of the cabinet. This is the flat style. And you can see here it says 15.2 WR and no date, unfortunately. Here is the, what I believe was a replacement woofer because I do not think that these speakers were manufactured at this date. It says December 6, 1989. Um, like again, I believe this is a replacement. I don't think that these speakers were uh, a 1989 model, but this one was put in after. So here is the back of, this is the lower mid, um, and this is where you're gonna see some different numbers depending on the year. This one you can see on the back of the plastic enclosure on this guy, it is, uh, it says right here, M6H. So they don't have these marked, whether they're an F, M6, H, or a C, M6, H. The only really difference between the two, one has a rounded style frame on it, and then one has these that has uh, the sides, top and bottom, or a uh, straight edge, and then the corners are rounded a bit. That's really the only difference, the mids are the same. These, again, are not marked in the back saying which or which, but it does have the M6, H on it. And then here, this one's just marked M6. So, and you can see, it is a closed basket style. It's got the two little um, vents on the side with some felt shoved in there. You might also see these mids in yours. They might not have any markings on them at all. I see that quite a bit. Or it could be uh, marked FM6 or CM6. And then also M6 like this one. And here we have the CS5, the proper tweeter for the D9. Um, Different versions of these tweeters. I'm not going to go. I could make a whole video um, on all the different tweeters and different manufacturers, and, and <laughs> it goes on and on and on. I'm not going to get too in depth into it with this one, but the CS5 is a proper tweeter for the D9. And on the back, you can have uh, you have a number 8642 on here, and you can see that wherever these were made, it was wiped out. 
Um, what I've noticed is most of the ones that haven't been um, the, the place of manufacture uh, wiped off, if it started with an 8, like this one, 8642, it was in, uh, made in Japan. And there's other versions. Pretty much every other one I've seen that is made in Taiwan uh, starts with a 9. Okay, those are all the drivers for the D9s. Now I'm gonna go to the crossover. I'm just gonna kind of go over this really quickly. I'm not gonna dive in depth into the crossover like I was originally planning on doing. I'm actually gonna make that, uh, I'm gonna make this a two-part video. Uh, the second part is going to be uh, a really in-depth look at the crossovers on these D9s. Anyways, my crossovers are going to look a little different than, than yours probably do. These, uh, if you haven't seen, I did another video. Um, oh, I did a video earlier on uh, the rebuild of these crossovers and really what I just went through them and I replaced the capacitors and uh, inductors. And I didn't change anything. I wasn't tweaking anything. I wasn't changing values. I wasn't trying to improve upon anything other than the quality of parts used. And that's exactly what I did. And I didn't go like, way out of control and spend hundreds and hundreds or even a thousand dollars on parts and stuff like that i just did a really budget friendly recap and and well not just a recap as uh, inductors as well but i just kind of tried to get the best i could with you know not spending a ton of money and i'm really really satisfied with these speakers they sound really really good uh when i first got these they were terrible absolutely terrible and and the reason for that I'll go through in the second part, but yeah, this is what I ended up with. It's not a whole lot to go through here. You got two potentiometers on these crossovers. You can adjust the, uh, the tweeter and the mid range level basically is all you're doing. Uh, it's two, both of them are 16 ohm, uh, potentiometers and you have that ability to adjust the resistance from well, zero to 16. And, uh, I will tell you right now, the higher, the better. Uh, when it comes to accuracy, I've measured these speakers already. We're going to be going through those measurements right away. And I did do a bunch of different measurements with these at, uh, adjusted at different levels. Um, I don't know if anybody ever listens to these with them turned all the way down. If I were you, I wouldn't. It's, well, it doesn't sound good. Um, I always found that the tweeters were turned up pretty high. So when I tune these to, or by ear, uh, when I set them up in my shop, I had the high frequency potentiometer at, um, the number five like that and is that the high yes so i kind of have this pointed at the five here you can go higher yet than the five but the, at the five is the highest number like there's a little more adjustment past that and it actually does make a difference um so i had the high uh, high level frequency at five and then i actually preferred the mid level uh sounded best to me at four four, four and a half, maybe. I think it was four and a half. Yeah, I just thought I'd let you know the initial measurements I'm gonna show here, that's what I had everything set at. Uh, five and 4.5, I think. Once we go through the measurements, I'll have to look at them again. I think I, I put on there what it was. Uh, I'll correct myself if I was wrong. Okay, here we go. This is the on-axis frequency response of my Serban Vega D9. Now I do have to correct myself. I had the high frequency uh, potentiometer set at the five and I had the mid range set at three and that was tuned to my ear and this is it. This is what it was. Uh, <laughs> wow. This is probably the flattest measuring Serban Vega speaker yet. Of the one I've measured yet. Uh, I was a little surprised. I wasn't expecting that actually. As you can see here, it pretty much stays within 5 dB uh, across the whole range uh, until you get up to, what is this, uh, 6, 7, about 7, 8 kilohertz. Uh, we get a little bit of a peak up here with that horn tweeter. And then just like all the other uh, D-series horn tweeters, you get to about that 16 kilohertz and uh, it just falls on its face. Now here we have the spectral decay. And I was really impressed with this even. Um, you can see to the right uh, on the bottom of the graph, it shows uh, how, that's how many milliseconds it takes uh, after the note is played. And it takes how, and uh, it's just showing how far or how long it takes for that 
sound to decay. And the quicker it plays and stops, is you're gonna have a better cleaning sounding speaker. And right at this 1.67 milliseconds, pretty much everything from just past 1K hertz and up plays, stops. There's, there's a few little ripples here and there, nothing terrible. I've definitely seen a lot worse. This is, uh, it's, a, it's an impressive spectral decay uh, for this Servant Vega speaker anyways. I was, I was a little shocked, I'm not gonna lie. Even down at the lower frequency end, that woofer actually is doing a really good job. That, for that woofer to be able to play and then stop, because that woofer is still playing out into that, uh, you know, because it starts rolling off around 500 hertz, I believe. Uh, but it's still playing after that. And you can see um, it, 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 it's falling off a lot quicker than others. A lot of times uh, you see the woofers, um, there's a whole lot of crap going on, especially if they're not filtered, if there's no low pass on them. And you'll see uh, it takes a long time for that sound to decay. And it's even up off past the five millisecond um, point on my graph. And it's just, yeah. So this is actually really, really clean sounding. I'm really, really impressed. So after seeing that frequency response and uh, and how flat it was for a Serban Vega, I thought, well, I'm going to start playing around with those potentiometers a bit. I'm going to adjust them and see how flat can I get that frequency response. And and really all I had to do is I just ended up bringing the high level uh, adjustment down in between four and five, so it's about 4.5, uh, just to try to get some of that top end down a bit because it had a bit of a peak there. And then I had to turn the mid-level up to about the five setting. So uh, to my ears, it was, it still sounds really good. I, I still preferred it the other way, um, which really kind of would give you that like happy face looking um, like equalizer, so to speak, to a point. And that's just kind of what I prefer. But uh, this still even sounded really good. And I was able to get this flattened out pretty good, as you can see here. Um, just with the exception of the crossover point between the tweeter and the mid-range uh, speakers here and that's um, well between uh, between five and seven kilohertz uh, you get a bit of a dip there um, nothing too crazy and if it wasn't for that this would be um, yeah like it's a really it's still a really really good looking um, frequency response and then to uh, look at the spectral decay for uh, after the adjustments I made um, you can see at the very top here that that's the more um, level frequency response i was able to get out of it and this frequency the spectral decay sorry it still looks really good it did because i brought the uh, mid-range level up a bit you can see right in between one and uh well just before one kilohertz and uh and 1500 kilohertz you get a little bit of a takes a little bit longer something going on there with that mid-range driver potentially uh, the woofer but it's still really good it's still fairly clean and it's uh yeah i mean it's the proof's right here and it, it's it's a really good speaker I'm, I'm still really really shocked i'm not gonna lie now before i go on to some of the other measurements i took i wanted to go through the impedance measurement first and this is um taken with the uh potentiometer set the way i had them uh, when they were in my shop and i was listening to them for all that time and this measurement even shocked me as well i assumed that these d9s were going to be a little bit harder on an amplifier figured they would probably dip four ohms, maybe less. And like, it doesn't. And I don't know how much this really changed because I didn't, you know, I wasn't able to get uh, a comparison of the original crossover to the one I did because some of the parts I changed out could have potentially changed this impedance graph, just depending on what the original parts conditions were like. Um, but if you look here, I've got uh, the green line and this is right at a hundred Hertz. Um, this is the lowest impedance of this D9 throughout the spectrum, and it's only at 5.2 ohms. Uh, again, I thought for sure we'd be dipping down into three, but it doesn't. And the yellow line to the left here at 28.7 hertz, uh, it's at 6.3 ohms, and this is the resonant frequency of the speaker. And it's just really clean it's not even that bad it does you know it's, it peaks up here not it's, it's still about 24 at the highest it gets to and uh and then even from the two kilohertz and up it's it's right along the lines of that 10 ohms um with that eight ohm tweeter kind of makes sense um it's not as 
as an uneven impedance that I was expecting, and it's a lot higher. So like this is, uh, yeah, like, I mean, to say this is a four ohm speaker, mm, barely, and it's more higher. I would say it's all, it's closer to six uh, for nominal impedance, but I mean, that's, you know, whether you think that'd be right or not, but I, I mean, I would have no problems. I would hook this up to an app that says eight ohm speaker only, and I'm sure most of them will handle them just fine. Now the measurements I just showed you were the very first initial measurements I took and uh, I, I ended up taking this one in the green later and this is with the high frequency set at 5 and the mid frequency set at 4. Just after doing a lot of critical listening to the speaker after the fact and adjusting the potentiometers uh, using my ear, this was the response I got measuring on access with the tweeter. And so this is the one I'm going to use for just kind of doing the rest of the measurements, but it's still a really good flat response. It's just, it has that little bit more of a dip in the middle. And just for reference, as flat as I could get this frequency response, um, this was with the high frequency set at the number five and then the mid frequency was actually past the five and almost maxed out just to get that mid level up in line with, with everything else. Okay. So here is, the full measurement, I'm showing the uh, overall uh, speaker frequency response is in the green, and then red for the woofer, yellow for the mids, blue for the tweeter. And this graph just shows what each driver is actually doing. Um, this is also one of the first Sturman Vega speakers that the crossover points are actually kind of where they said they should be. They're usually quite a lot different and they could just be measuring them differently than I am or however they were doing it. But as you can see the red in the woofer, you can see that they stated as a crossover point at 500 Hertz. They're actually just a little bit over 550. It's really, really close, but you can see that that woofer actually starts rolling off around just before 500. So, I mean, they're pretty bang on with that. And, and then you have your mid range that starts coming in right about that point. And then it stays, fairly flat for the most part. There's a little bit of a dip there at about 1500 Hertz. And then it kind of comes back down before two for the mid range. This is a yellow we're looking at. Um, and everything's good there. And phase wise, everything appears to be pretty decent at your mid to tweeter crossover point with the yellow and the blue line here. Um, everything is, is matching and, and phasing really well there. The only problem I see is right here at what would be at here about 6500 hertz you can see where the mid range kind of has a dip and then it's kind of peaking back up that is all kind of getting out of phase with the tweeter response because you can see the green line at that point it actually dips where the mid range humps and all is happening is is at that access uh on tweeter access that i'm measuring from you're just starting to get some phase issues and it cancels out um that point there a little bit because if it wasn't for that this would be really 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 good flat response so you could almost fix this a little bit by just maybe rolling that um that mid range off either rolling it off a little steeper or or starting that roll off a little earlier this next measurement here is one that i was really kind of wondering about because if you don't know the two mid ranges on these d9s are not the same the filter for them is the same uh from the crossover, it's the same signal that goes to both upper and lower mid ranges. The difference being the upper mid range is a closed basket, basket style mid range, and that is open to the entire cabinet. And the lower mid range has its own enclosure, and it is uh, it got damping material and stuff in there. And I'm not surprised to see. You can look at the graph here how it rolls off. They're pretty much the same. I'm not surprised to see that. And, and nor am I surprised to see the difference at the low end because that's where you're going to see that big difference with the enclosures is going to be in the lower frequencies. So this graph here shows the upper mid range in the brown orange color, the lower mid range in the yellow. And uh, as you can see, it, it makes quite a bit of difference from that 200 up to, to about the one kilohertz uh, range. And this graph here, this is just showing all I did. It's the same as the other one. It shows all the drivers separately, even the separate mids. So it's not showing the combined frequency of the two mids together. It's just showing the, uh, the two mids separately, along with the overall response and the tweeter and the woofer. So 
I mean, they all kind of work together to kind of get that frequency response that they were after. And um, this is a really well-designed speaker. And I'd have to say it's a really well-designed crossover compared to a lot of the others that I have taken a look at. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is gonna be the one to beat as of yet for all the other speakers that I'm gonna measure in the future. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all really interesting information. Not that this changes how I listen to them or what I do or, or whatever. It's just, I'm, I'm always really, really interested just to see, uh, be able to see what these speakers are actually doing. This next measurement here is just showing a comparison of um, the overall frequency response of the speaker with the potentiometers um, set at different levels. So I put the green one in here, high at five, mid at four. I put this in here because that was my uh, preferred response, I guess we'll say. And, and then I compared all the other measurements um, after I had adjusted and changed them. So I, after that, I just went and I cranked both mid and high frequency potentiometers, maxed them right out. Uh, it was pretty flat. It was a little bit too much. I, I don't recommend, well, I mean, maybe you like it. I, I didn't prefer it, uh, the sound of it in, in this way. It was a little bit too much for me. It was way too much mid-range. Um, but it's still a pretty good flat response. Um, and then I just kind of went in the middle. So high and mid, both at three. And this is in the purple. And this is where you see you're starting to get some phase issues um, between the mid and the tweeter. And you'll see that dip there after just after five kilohertz. And then, then I put them all the way down to zero. So at that point, you're putting 16 ohms of resistance on both the mids and the tweeter. And this caused a huge hole in the response there. And it didn't sound good either. And I really doubt that anybody is probably listening to their D9s with uh, both adjustments turned all the way down. I just, it just doesn't sound good. Okay, this is where I'm gonna wrap up this video right here. Um, we're already, well, this is probably gonna be a long video as it is. Uh, there you go, the G9s. Uh, shocking, actually. I probably said it about 10 times already. Uh, I was not expecting that, and uh, it makes me happy. Not that I did anything to make them uh, you know, more accurate, um, other than the fact that maybe the original crossovers may have been out of spec a bit, and then some of the crossover points might have been out, may have caused some issues, I don't know. I didn't test the original crossovers. I didn't have all this test equipment when I originally did this rebuild. But regardless if they are, they still measure accurately or not, the parts I put in mine really made an improvement, and there was one in particular that did, and again, uh, I'm going to be making a second part to this. It'll be hopefully coming out shortly after I upload this one and I'm really going to go into things. So what I've got here is uh, I've actually got three different schematics and these are all for the D9. Um, there's actually a possibility of having more than three different variations of, of these uh, crossovers. More than likely three main ones. There might be some, some subtle changes here and there. That's one thing I'm gonna go through because uh, you can't just take these schematics or one of these and just expect that's what yours is gonna be. It, um, there were some changes, mainly with resistors and stuff, but there was also a bunch of other things that changed too. I also am gonna go through, and I don't know if I'm gonna actually like start dismantling my crossovers. I've, I didn't really make it that easy to work on or change things. I might, I haven't decided yet, but I'm really gonna go through those crossovers and. I'm gonna let you guys know what parts I used, where I got them from, and if you guys want these, your D9s to sound as good as I got mine to sound, it's gonna be exactly that. You buy those parts, they're still available today. Bang, bang, boom, wire them in, you're good to go. I'm gonna go through everything step by step for everything you need to know to recap your own crossovers so you don't have to, you know, buy overpriced ones on eBay that are maybe just as bad if you're buying an original one, or, I mean, it's expensive to get other people to do this work. But like I said, part two, I'm gonna go into that uh, a lot more thoroughly. And yeah, this one was basically just, I want to measure these things. I want to see where they sat. That's gonna do it for this video. Remember, Sir Vegas, big or small, save them all.